Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Today I want to create a safe place for you to heal and understand a very complex emotion that many survivors of narcissistic abuse grapple with, which is regret. Whether you've left a narcissistic relationship, you've just realized that you're in one right now, regret can cast a long shadow and it's time that we shed some light on it. Regret after narcissistic abuse isn't just about wishing that you had never met the narcissist. It goes much deeper than that. It's mourning the person that you were, the time that you lost with the narcissist, the love, energy, affection, time, so forth that you gave, the red flags that you overlooked. It's a mix of guilt, sadness, anger, and gone unchecked, this is a cocktail of self-reproach. So it's important that first you know that you're not the, the first one to feel this way, and you're certainly not alone in these feelings. Narcissists are master manipulators, and it's important that you understand this emotion was designed to serve you, but what happens is that most people don't know how to utilize this emotion to serve them, so it just kind of stays along with them, and they never move forward into another emotion. So regret can morph into different forms. So you could regret losing yourself, the wasted years, the impact on your children, your finances, so forth. You might regret not leaving sooner, or, or maybe you even regret that the narcissist manipulation is the reason that you left and not choosing yourself first sooner to be the reason that you left. So it's important that you recognize these feelings and actually get to the root of why your regret is there. We don't want to dwell in them. We just want to understand why these emotions are there. Like I said, regret is actually designed to serve you. However, staying in regret is like getting in quicksand. It pulls you deeper into self-blame. It robs you of your present and clouds your future. And it can even make you question your reality due to wondering if the abuse was real, if you were the problem, if there's something you could have said or done to eliminate this outcome that you're faced with right now. And again, the longer that you're in this quicksand, kind of the more overwhelming it, it feels. And if that's you, I want you to understand that the regret is not going to go away simply by ignoring it. We actually have to lean in to figure out why it's there so that it can start serving us. And then we can know what the next right step for us is. First of all, we need to accept everything that has happened. Okay, acceptance doesn't mean that I say it's okay to how I was treated to what happened to me or that you just forget about what happened and that you just move on. That's not what it means. It just means that you accept these are the things that happened to me. I own this as part of my story now. You acknowledge these very painful details as part of your story. You're not going to let them define you, but you aren't going to hide them or ignore them. You want to understand that the narcissist is 100% responsible for their actions and you are also 100% responsible for yours. So that might involve self-forgiveness, right? You need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive the narcissist. And if you can't move into forgiving the narcissist, which by the way, I have an entire playlist on the concept of forgiveness, um, if you need help working through that, then forgive their actions, you don't need to forgive them as a person to start, but you can start by forgiving their behavior. And once you can do this, that shift alone will start really opening up the next stage for you. The next thing that you want to do in terms of acceptance is recognizing what you have gone through and be kind to yourself for what you have survived right? You, you want to be mindful of the things that you have made it through so that none of that loses its value. None of that loses the, the strength that is carried with those experiences. So celebrate your courage, celebrate your resilience. You want to recognize the love that you were capable of giving, the amount and the strength of that love that you were capable of giving even if it was to the wrong person, even if it was uh, lasted too long or should have been like this, you just want to uh, 
appreciate the the value that that kind of love has, right? And so be compassionate to yourself. Speak to yourself like you would speak to a dear friend who suffered through this same experience, through your, as you would speak to your children. One of the things that I find with my clients who ha- are seriously um, suffering from regret is that they don't understand how to um, get the wisdom out of this experience so that they can truly move forward. And I'm going to talk about the last half of this video, what happens when you don't let go of regret and how this can manifest in your physical body. But right now, I really want you to understand that if you are feeling regret, again, this is an emotion that was designed to serve you. And if it is not serving you, it's because you haven't learned how to partner with it yet. So besides acceptance, radical acceptance of this experience being what it was, we now need to plunder that experience for the wisdom. What are the things that you are supposed to learn from that experience? What are the boundaries that you need to put up the next time quicker so that this doesn't even happen? What are the red flags that you can no longer overlook? What are the things that uh, you need to have in place with those people that you trust, maybe family and friends around you who tried to warn you, uh, but you didn't really see what they saw in that moment? So what are the things that you have in your toolkit, you have available to you right now that you can start implementing in different ways so that you're going to get a different outcome should a similar situation try to arise in your life? Lots of times people have regret and deep regret that they carry with them because they, there's, there is something about that experience that they have not fully accepted they have not gotten the wisdom from, they have not truly embraced it as part of their story. They keep trying to deny it. I can't believe this is happening is an is a statement that right away will tell me you've not accepted the place of existence that you're in right now. You aren't at peace with the fact that this is something that's happening. Whether or not this is an event that you want to acknowledge, uh, whether or not this is a situation that you want to be in at all, it doesn't matter. You have to accept that this is part of your life. You can, when you resist it, you are resisting everything that should go along with it. Healing, okay? The the acceptance thing like I was talking about, you're definitely not accepting anything about it. If you don't accept it, you can't heal it. So instead of trying to resist this thing, draw it close to you. Let it become a part of you. Let this become part of the testimony of your incredible story. If you don't get rid of regret, this can have extreme physical, mental, emotional, and relational manifestations in your life. The physical impact of regret can range from everything as small as stress and tension in your body, which can eventually turn chronic, and your stress response will be overstimulated which can lead to the overutilization of stress hormones like cortisol. This can cause tension, headaches, fatigue. It can even put you and lead you into adrenal fatigue. There will be sleep disturbances, so you'll have issues falling asleep, staying asleep. You'll have nightmares um, or just general unrestful sleep. You can even have digestive issues, and this is typically... One of the one of the things that alerts me that if if my if I've been working with a client for a while and they're totally fine, they don't even have anxiety anymore necessarily about talking or communicating or interacting with a narcissist, but they'll still every now and again have digestive issues. It typically has to do with regret, and moreover, it it typically is either around a certain um, time of year. Or it is around a certain experience or event. So, for example, I had one client who was totally fine, did not have any issues with this any longer, could interact with a narcissist just normally, even dropping the kids off and doing exchanges and so forth. But every time she would be at her son's um, soccer or football game, that was what would cause it. Well, at, at the beginning of the breakup between her and her husband, what had happened was he had had a huge emotional explosion 
on her and the kids at a different a different one of their child's sporting events. There was a regret issue that had to do with that specific instance that she hadn't healed yet. So paying attention to digestive issues, especially if you are over anxiety, you've gotten through depression, you've really come to terms with where you are now, there could still be a specific issue or event that you haven't made peace with. Okay, so pay attention to that. Stomach aches, nausea, diarrhea, constipation, all of those digestive issues can be tied to something in the past that is actually showing you where you need to do the healing. You can also have weakened immune systems because of any one of these things happening. Um, you know, prolonged stress, obviously, this weakens your immune system, and that alone makes you more susceptible to infections. Um, it can start leaching minerals from your bones, making you more susceptible to um, breaks and other issues in your bones. The emotional impact of carrying regret, obviously, sadness and depression, right? Regret typically comes with this overwhelming sense of of heaviness, of um, hopelessness, and it can feel like you're trapped in your o- in your past decisions, the old part of you. You just can't keep, you can't get away from it. It's like you keep making the same decisions or the same cycle or the same day keeps getting lived over and over and over. And that can um, progress into extreme depression. Not getting rid of regret or addressing regret can also reduce you to living in a state of constant anxiety and fear. It can make you paralyzed about making future decisions, uh, about fear over repeating past mistakes, worrying about the effects of past actions, even ones that happened a year, five years, ten years ago, wondering how that's going to impact you now. Obviously, there's a lot of shame and guilt that um, that come along with regret. And so if you feel like, like your regret is stemmed from violating your own moral or ethical or religious code of conduct, this especially can be very hard for you to, um, to come to terms with. And when that happens, obviously you're not showing up authentically, right? You're, you're, the best version of you is not coming forth. And because you're in such a state, a conscious awareness of your guilt and shame, this can lead you to continuously making the actions that you originally felt guilt and shame over. And of course, this can also uh, create anger and frustration, especially towards yourself. You could feel extreme anger, even hatred, towards yourself or frustration over not being able to change the past, like feeling like the narcissist did 10 million things and yet they're still coming out on top. I did one mistake and now I'm having to live with, you know, X, Y, and Z being the reality. And when this is the case, it's just really important that, again, you understand you're, you cannot change the past. I've said this before in other videos, but if you want to change the past, you have to create a different future. Your past is redeemed in the future. If you want to ensure that your past has no repercussion on your future, you have to really be present in the present moment. You have to embrace what is happening now, not trying to push it away, not trying to escape it, but really being able to identify why you're still feeling this regret and what you can do with that feeling to have it serve you for your future. Of course, there's still going to be mental impacts from not dealing with regret. One of them being toxic rumination. This is obsessive thinking about the past decisions or past actions. And it it's where you replay something over and over and over. What this does is it trains your brain to not only have a very strong memory to that specific issue, to that specific event, or feeling, but it also creates neural pathways in your brain that make it much more easier for you to look for that specific type of event, that specific type of feeling that comes along with that event or action or whatever it is that you're ruminating about, so that it continues to repeat. This not only robs you of your present, 
but it also is setting up your future on a path that you don't want to have repeated. Uh, chronic regret can also lead to reduced self-esteem. This persistent feeling of like you're not good enough, you didn't live up to, you know, these certain standards that you had for yourself or you wish you could change something, it really induces feelings of worthlessness, of incompetence. And again, it lowers your self-esteem, your self-confidence, you're not showing up authentically. And when you don't show up authentically, you're more likely to make decisions and choices that are not in alignment with who you truly are. And again, decision-making paralysis, which I kind of mentioned already, which is that you just can't make a decision, right? Everything is really overwhelming. Every decision is very difficult to make. And this leads to indecisiveness, but it can also lead to avoidance. And when you try to avoid making decisions, this can put you in a position where you are very vulnerable, especially if you are in a legal situation where you need to be able to think clearly, you need to be able to make decisions quickly, you need to be able to respond to your attorney or the court system or the third parties involved in the court system quickly and concisely, again, this can lead to further hindrances and setbacks from where you want your case to head. So your ultimate goals are ultimately being delayed because you can't make these decisions, because you're experiencing this paralysis of making the right choice. And finally, this can also lead to cognitive dissonance. When when your regretted action or the past thing that you have regret over is in direct opposition to how you view yourself, to how you want to think about yourself, your life, your values, this can lead to this confusion of I'm, I view myself this way and yet this is how my life is happening, right? This is again that lack of of acceptance of the current situation like, that I was mentioning at the beginning of this video in order to overcome regret. You really need to have acceptance of where we are. Hey, I can still be that person, but I made a bad choice. I made a bad decision, right? Or I chose to ignore my intuition, or I chose to ignore the advice of my trusted family and friends and pursue this path anyway. When you can actually say both things can be true, it stops that confusion. Another thing that I like to teach my clients is that only in partial understanding is there confusion. You will never be confused when you have the full understanding, right? When I have the full understanding of how light refraction works, then I don't, I don't have any confusion about how the uh, water, how the ocean is blue or how the sky is blue. Right, because I understand what's happening with the way that light works and the way that my eyes are interpreting and perceiving the light. Only in partial understanding is there confusion. So once you can kind of pull back and you can see the full picture and you can say, I am both, I can be both this person, this ideal version of myself that I like to think about myself as, and understand, but I also made these decisions that were not harmonious with that original image, then that can help you create the, the roadmap to making what I call predetermined choices, which is if I'm in a situation that I already know, I have a hard time making a decision, I have a hard time standing up for myself, I have a hard time setting boundaries, in advance, I'm making I'm making a list of the things that I'm going to say. I'm making a list of the phrases that I can say in those moments because I've made a predetermined choice. I'm already going to do this. I'm not going to make it up on the on the spur of the moment when I can say to myself, I I view myself as this person, and this person always makes this kind of choice. But if I'm honest with myself, right now I can't make that kind of choice. So instead, I'm taking away the pressure of how could I respond or what could I say in that moment? And instead, I'm making a predetermined choice. I'm coming into the situation armed with the right words, the right um, mindset about what I'm going to say or do in that moment, even if it's that I can't make a decision right now, right? I'm going to get back to you in 24 hours. And that's an okay answer to help build the, the congruence back again between 
who you view yourself to be and marry it with the past decisions and the past things that have happened that have maybe put your life and put you and your children in a situation where it, it doesn't, they don't line up. So I hope this video really helps you understand regret as a whole. I really want you to know why it's so important to address it because unresolved regret has serious consequences for your physical body, for your mental health, emotionally, for your relationships. Obviously, this will impact every area of your life. And second of all, I want you to understand most of the time regret lingers simply because people have not been able to accept that this thing has happened to them or that they are now in this type of situation, right? Regardless of how dire the situation looks. Once you accept, okay, I'm 60 and I'm starting over or I'm 75 and I'm single or I'm a single mom at 22, whatever your situation is, the, the easiest way for you to get over the feeling of regret is to first accept your current situation, along with all of the decisions that you either made or didn't make along the way. If you need help getting over and really processing through regret, I want you to consider joining my Narcissistic Detox Intensive. I have an entire section where we cover regret. There's a guided meditation to help you overcome regret and to really let this go out of your soul and out of your body as well, as well as how to help reprogram your way of thinking and align it with your spirit so that you're not in a situation where you have to think about if this decision is going to be something that you're going to regret or not. You have full trust in yourself to make the kinds of decisions that will get you to the type of life that you ultimately want to have. And to do that, you can shoot me a text. And if you're outside of the United States, I want you to send me an email. My email is in the description of this video, and I will see you guys next week.